What does failure mean to me? Honestly, it means learning. With anything I do, with any risks I take, I either win or I learn. And when you're at the bottom, you can either stay there or you can fight. When I was 17, man, I really just had a big breakdown. I really did. That, that, that's, the, that's the single most thing I remember most vividly in this world, is when I broke down and I'm praying. Kyle got into MMA because he, he lost quite a few important people in his life, you know, at one time. So, you know, he was a little down and out. Um, but so I think he really wanted to find his niche. I never wanted to fight growing up. I didn't like it. You know, I the first time I watched the UFC when I was 16 and it was on TV, I was like, I had to turn it off. I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I didn't understand it. And I was always afraid to fight. I didn't want to lose. I didn't want to get punched in the face. I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to be embarrassed. And I didn't even pay attention to it. I thought it was a phase that Kyle was going through. MMA, mixed martial arts. I was like, why was he? Why would he want to get hit? Why does he want to fight? My life started when I was 17. I got into MMA. You know what I'm saying? And I started just seeing a whole different world. I started developing more and more talents, not just you know physically, but you know emotionally as well with people and connecting. And I started teaching. You know, I started teaching at a young age of 19. I'm teaching people much older than me. There's nobody else still younger than me at that school. So that's the one thing that I remember about Kyle the most is just that, that personal sort of connection that I had with Kyle. It's almost like I knew him without having met him really before. Kyle just has this presence about him that really draws people to him. And it's something that you can't really see at first. It's something you just kind of feel, just kind of almost a magnetism. You know, it got to the point where I had, I finally had a last home, which I thought, and one day I walked in and they were just like, you know, Kyle, we think you, it's best you need to be on your own. It, it was just shocking to me that once I started developing these things, kind of what they molded me into in the first place, egos got in the way and it was, they, I literally got pushed out of a gym that I grew, you know, to had a home in. Imagine being pushed out of your home, you know what I'm saying, for something that you don't understand, for something you've been, that you thought was right. You know, when I first started to take the first fights, I wanted to prove something to myself. All that hurt, rejection, being average, blah, blah, This was my chance to prove something to myself, man. And, uh, you know, to feel that frustration, to feel the sense of wanting to quit, but overcoming it, to feel pain. <laughs> There's nothing like it, man. You find yourself through fighting, man. I truly fought for my life. But the first fight that I saw was about a year and a half ago. I didn't know what to expect. I've never seen an MMA fight live. Nonetheless, it's my brother fighting. I'm sitting right next to the family members of the other fighter, and it's a big difference. Kyle is shorter, the underdog, you know, the guy's about a foot taller. So I'm, you know, they're like, it's over before it starts. And in my head, I'm thinking, you don't know Kyle. You don't know who he is, what he's been through. It's like being in another world, man, in the first fight. You know, your first fight, you're going against a guy that trained literally to beat you up. I've never felt 
such a rush, such a feeling than being in a cage with another human being in your one-on-one, -on -one, trying to use your physical, mental strength to the best of your ability against somebody else. In my first fight, man, I went in there and I got my butt kicked for two rounds. But I didn't give up, I kept fighting. Third round, I put him to sleep. He was asleep for five minutes and I won. That right there was another huge turning point in my life. After that, I won my next six fights, plus two titles. And it was simply from not giving, giving up. Not because I was the best fighter, I was just mentally stronger. I was smarter. And I just didn't fear a thing. see that in me and they realize that and these bigger guys that I fight because I do fight the bigger guys I challenge the better guys the last guy I fought was 11 to 1 cutting from 250 pounds I walk around at 170 and I said I want him I called him out I wanted him that's my challenge David and Goliath type of stuff that's what I want that's what like makes me live man I lost but I gained so much more than that dude ever did and anybody else watching it ever did. There is a part of you that sometimes has to emotionally disconnect and sit there and say, uh, you know, I really don't like to see my friend in the ring getting his face pounded. You know, and I know that that was a struggle for him, that hurt. That was once again one of those down moments where, uh, well, why did this happen? But he just, you know, turned around, took with it and ran. It's almost like I didn't decide it, it just happened. I ended up after, started teaching for free, and before I knew it, I had like 30 students. Of course I was doing it for free, but I said, maybe it's time to do my own thing. When Kyle came up to me and, and told me he wanted to open up a gym, and he looked at me and he said, do you remember our old dojo and how great it felt? It felt like our second home. It felt like it didn't matter what was going on with the rest of the world. As soon as we walked in here, they all just seemed to go away and it was safe. He goes, why don't we do that? I mean, MMA, can, uh, and honestly, I can say, kind of saved my life. You know, I developed, I know what struggle is now. I know what pushing myself to tears and blood and bleeding out. I know what it's like to put tears and blood into something. Fighting is, is, is easier than life, okay? Fighting is easier than life, okay? But you take the tools from fighting to apply it to life. Now I see the big picture. It's not about getting hit in the face. It's not about beating someone else up. He took a challenge within himself and wanted to change. And now that he has changed for the better and sees what it does for him, that's what Kyle wants to do now open a gym, accept everybody into the gym, make them feel wanted because everyone is special. And I think that's why he got into it. We have gang members here, man. We have drug addicts. We have people that have been abused. We have people that have abused. We're not a place to push people away. That's what these people have felt their whole life. They've been pushed away their whole life. No wonder they are how they are. That's why we build these doors. Come in, let, let, like be part of our family. You know, you wanna change your life? It's time, right now. Why not, if not here, where? So we'll let anybody come through these doors, anybody. You know, you could just sit back, not live life, choose the safe option, but you're not gonna grow. And it just, it, it shows in Kyle how much he has grown because he has been rejected so many times. He has come across failure because he's put himself out there. But the thing that's really inspiring about it is he continues to put himself out there. Kyle's goal is to change the world, make an impact on it, to help others that have failed to become successful. If somebody is is hurting inside, he's gonna accept them. And, and usually people that are hurting inside are people that have failed. Well, he can say, Kyle can say, listen, I know where you've been. You know, come with me, let's get through it together. I can't tell you the amount of people that have come in and cried in front of me, and broken down in front of me, and told me their life stories, how deep it is. And you know what's awesome about that? I relate to them. 
I relate, and I tell them, hey, let me tell you something. And I tell them my story, 